if Chase had his way, everything we do would be bloopers. Yeah. It would be nothing but vaccine stuff out in public. <clears throat> it would be awesome, but it's not smart. No. We're not advertising, Lucas. All righty. <clears throat> Today we're over here at Story, and we're going to be talking about something that everyone is always asking us about. Adjustments with your suspension, adjustments with your clickers, right height, everything you need to know right here. about adjusting your shocks. What's going on, Justin? <coughs> Hi guys, Justin obviously, and uh, behind the camera we've got Chase, and behind him we've got Mitch. So between all three of us, hopefully we can answer all your questions anytime that you throw it at us. But today's, I think episode is basically going to be uh, geared towards how you adjust your shock from an adjuster standpoint, ride height, spring, crossover, all the stuff that we get the most questions about. So shoot with questions and we'll answer them as we go. But what we're going to do is start with typical shock. <clears throat> so this is actually off an X3, but what you're going to find on, for adjustments, you're going to find a high and you're going to find a low speed adjuster. Not sure if you can see that on there, Chase. Oh yeah, we got it. So usually on the head of the shock, whether it's a Fox or whether it's a Walker or anything else, you're going to have some sort of a compression adjuster. Now this is a DSE, your dual compression adjuster. And you can see by some of the print on here that it's a high speed on the outside, low speed on the inside. Well, what does high and low speed do? In the simplest way I could possibly describe it, high speed and actually let me back up. Speed is not related to you driving fast. Speed relates to how fast the shock shaft moves so, and how much oil it moves. So high speed is moving the shock shaft a long direction or a long distance in a short amount of time. And low speed would be moving the shaft a very short amount. Doesn't matter if it's fast or slow, like chops and whoops. So back to this. High speed is big hits big jump landings, big G outs, things that are gonna bottom the car out. Um, put a lot of people in the car, a lot of weight in the car. High speed typically will control it and stop you from bottoming out. Low speed, low speed controls, slow shaft movements like chop and boatiness. Um, it also controls a little bit of body roll and that's this little uh, bronze uh, adjuster on top. So. High speed, big hits. Low speed, little hits. And boatiness. So if you bottom the car out, you're gonna turn this high speed adjuster clockwise. Righty tighty always stiffens the system up. If it, uh, you don't ever bottom the car out and you wanna get a little bit softer ride, you can loosen this big one up until the car bottoms out too much and then go back where you used to be. On the low speed adjuster, low speed, as I said, is chop, small, uh, small bumps and rocks and boatiness. As you start to turn this one in and stiffen the system up from a low speed standpoint, you'll see, um, come back up here, Chase. You'll see kind of the boatiness in the car go from like old Cadillac with worn out shocks. It'll start to settle down. A little bit more low speed, it'll start to go away. And you turn low speed in where you have almost no roll in the car as you're driving it, that's kind of perfect. You put more low speed into it, it's too much. You start to feel all the chop and all the chatter. You go back where you used to be on low speed and kind of keep the car controlled. That's how you adjust low speed. Back to high speed. High speed again, big hits. If you jump the car and bottom it out, you're gonna turn the high speed up or clockwise to stiffen the system up. Uh, G outs in the dunes. Um, the biggest whoops, like two, three footers where you're kind of landing in the face of every single one of them. Uh, and picking up a buck or bottoming the car out and it bucks, that would be high speed, start stiffening that in or, or clockwise. Um, that's the basics for compression. If you have a walker, you only have one clicker and that's gonna be high speed period. You don't have low speed adjustments. If it's a velocity, you're gonna have a high and you're gonna have a low speed. Um, most shocks just typically have a single adjuster for high. On the bottom of this one, you can see we also have a rebound adjuster. That rebound adjuster, is controlling how much fluid is going through the piston and shaft and controls the extension of the shock. So once that shock is compressed, 
completely. How quickly it extends or how slowly it extends is what this adjustment is controlling. This is very hard to describe to people um, from our standpoint on how to adjust it because all terrains are different, um, all cars are different, driving styles are different, but this, the easiest way to do this, <clears throat> if you get the compression close, and um, come back up here, if you, if you get the compression close and you go find yourself a jump, it doesn't have to be big, just get the car off the ground a foot and land it flat. Um, rebound is going to be how that car lands and then reacts. If it lands and goes boing, 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 all right, well, it rebounded too quickly after that landing, so you need to put some rebound into it. If the front was fast and the back was okay, it would land like this, boing, boing. You would slow the front down. If it lands like this, a couple times, you're gonna slow the back down. Jump it again. All right, it's a little better. Jump it again, it recovers one time and not two or three times. Once it lands and recovers once, rebound is good to go. Now in the whoops, faster rebound is better. Um, in the dunes, a little bit more rebound is better for landing it, um, rock crawling. You're gonna have a lot of rebound in it because you don't want this thing to bounce off the rocks. You want it to kind of settle into them. A lot of this is personal preference and we kind of teach that to our customers as we go, but we want to make sure that you guys understand which one does what. Do you guys have any questions so far before we go into the inside of a compression adjuster? I got one from uh, Richmond <coughs> Jacob. He asked, does this pertain to the dynamic okay. Fox shock as well? So on uh, dynamics, you're not going to be able to control the compression from a manual standpoint. The computer is controlling it for you. But what you can do is go on the dash and you can set it soft, medium, or hard, or I forget what the dynamic says on it, Mitch, is it firm or hard, firm, I think? I think it's soft, medium, and firm. Soft, medium, firm, I forget. So that's the only thing you can do is a three position adjuster um, from the dash uh, on a dynamics. It's gonna do the rest of it for you. Um, do all the dynamics have a rebound adjuster or only half of them? I, I forget. <clears throat> Do any of them? I don't think any of them. Do you actually? I think it's just the, the three position switch on the dash. Oh, you know which one does is the race car dynamics. Um, that's it. So, um, from a rebound standpoint, if you have a factory or OE shocks on any factory car, you're not going to have a rebound adjuster for that. You can't control it. But you can also get dynamics on a race version shock, which will have that uh, rebound adjuster on it. And then you can go back to the rebound settings that we kind of mentioned really quick. <clears throat> but ultimately in dynamics, you have three positions, it's gonna be on the dash. Uh, Mega Desert Diesel <clears throat> asks, rebound right turn for slower extension. Correct. So uh, Mega, when you adjust the rebound, all of these settings are controlling or slowing down resistance. That's how all of this is judged. So as you turn more compression into a compression adjuster, it is, resisting the compression of the shock, which makes it stiffer. As you turn more adjustment into a rebound adjuster, it's resisting the extension of the shock, which makes extension slower. So when we say too much rebound or not enough rebound, um, we are saying if there's not enough rebound in it, it lands and boings right out. Um, it's too fast, it extends too fast. If we say it has too much rebound in it, it might land or go through the whoops, the tire will go through the whoops and it'll stay there and pack up through the air. That's too much rebound. So as you turn that screw to the right, you're adding rebound or slowing it down. All good there? Yep. All right, cool. Let's look at some adjusters. So <clears throat> all the way closest to the camera, this is a, a compression adjuster taken apart and this is a dual speed compression adjuster from Fox. So as you turn this larger knob or this smaller screw adjustment, these are independent from each other, so as you turn the big one, you're not adjusting the little one. You can adjust the little one and not touch the big one, and it's not gonna change either one. On the inside, there's a complete one assembled. I'll take that back out. You've got piston, got valving on both sides of the piston. You've got a pressurized uh, spring, which gives tension against the compression assembly on this. Um, also gives what gives you tension against these adjusters. We've also got some free flowing passages on the inside that I won't go through. But look at this. Now look at all these parts spread out. Starting from the nut side, you've got a nut with a spring on it. The reason this is sprung is because in this system it's got what's called a pop-off rebound. So this rebound shim 
is a pop-off, meaning it's spring-loaded. So any rebound cycle has basically no resistance whatsoever in this adjuster because all the rebound is done on the other end of the shock. So pop-off, rebound shim, piston, compression stack. These compression shims are also adjustable. This is something we do a lot of when we're inside the shock. You've got a retainer washer for the spring on both ends, and that also backs up the uh, compression valving, and these can be tuned as well. Uh, a lot of shock guys don't know that, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but we can change these this washer right here and the shape of it and make that compression stack act differently. So that's how this system functions. Here is a three-way adjuster, so a simpler version of the dual speed. So high, low speed. This is high speed only, and you have three positions, soft, medium, and hard. Now, it's actually the same adjuster for the most part, piston and valving and the pop-off on rebound, but it doesn't have the um, detail of adjustments that the standard one does. It doesn't have the high and the low speed adjustment that that does. This is basically just turning compression up and down. It's allowing flow to go through the center of this shaft, come out of these ports. This is an IQS which is electronic or intelligent quick switch. This is an electronically adjustable compression system. This is very similar to this dual speed. Although this adjusts high speed only. Well, actually I should take that back how much. It actually adjusts high and low speed together, but you don't have the option of separating them. So as this system turns up and down, you're actually turning both of these at the same time if it was a manual system. This flows 10% more oil below and above its adjustment on from this. So when I say that, I mean, well, just by switching to this system, this would be 10% more plush and this would be 10% more stiff just by going this direction because of oil flows. Did we point out something for all the YXZ guys that we do have IQS for that car now? Uh, no, actually, that's a good point, Mitch. Um, we have not had any IQS for any YXZs in the past, but now we do. So all you YXE guys, we have the electronic system available for you so you can adjust that thing on the fly and hopefully make it do exactly what you want. Woohoo! Chase loves YXEs, so you've got YXE fan right there. Me and George. Yeah, and George Hamill. So last adjuster over here, this is a live valve or basically what you get in a Dynamics. It's electronically controlled, just like this one is, but this is a servo that spins this one is a magnetic uh, needle that's held in position with power, and that allows you to add tension to this pop-off rebound and tension to this compression stack that comes in the system. Um, it basically does the same thing as this one, this one, and this one, with the exception of being run by the computer. That's about the only difference, and these things being about 300 bucks each, 1200 a set. That's why it's hard to convert any car that doesn't have dynamics into one that has dynamics. It's very, very expensive. We got a quick question from <coughs> Zach MTB. What will I notice from a shock therapy tune on my X3 for high speed desert and whoops? Um, it's going to be a drastic change for the better. Um, you're, it's going to be more plush through bigger things. So right now you might be able to go through one foot whoops pretty decent, two foot whoops hurt. With our system, two footers, three footers are not gonna hurt you. It's gonna go straight through it, flat and level. Um, whereas stock might have some bucking and kicking in the back. When you start getting to the big stuff, you won't have that with our system. It's going to carry a, a, a taller ride height, so ground clearance is better. Uh, with a sway bar in the front of the car, it's gonna turn better. Um, overall, the plush factor is doubled. The ride quality is tripled. It's gonna be a giant change and definitely worth the money. more manageable. I always mm. tell people it's like, you know, when you don't have our tune, the car's fighting you. And then once you kind of get it dialed in for what you're doing and what your car is designed for geometry wise, you're not fighting your driving as much. So what Chase just said is that for, from his perspective, with the stock system, you're constantly fighting it, maybe driving just to what the stock system's potential is. With our system, you're not fighting it. You have the comfort and stability to drive it to your potential because this car the car and the suspension aren't holding you back from what you can do now that it works right. So another key factor to adjusting shocks is going to be adjusting your spring cap package, ride heights and crossovers, because 
all the spring packages work in conjunction with the internals of the shock and the adjustments that you're putting into it. So let's just go over ride heights really quick. Got the race car behind you. Let's look at this side. Normally, <clears throat> the order in which we would want you to adjust your stuff is gonna be ride heights first, crossover second, and then shock adjustments last. So from a ride height standpoint on an X3, we measured from the ground to the bottom of the floor, right here at my finger. <clears throat> on this race car, about 18 inches right now, 19-ish. But on uh, most uh, play cars, we're in about the 16 to 17 inch range. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, in the back, it's a little simpler. We go from the skid plate to the ground, dead center. So the back of this car is 17. That's because we don't have anybody in it. Normally we run about a 16 and a half inch ride height with full of fuel and full of driver, passenger and everything else. So this car would be about 16 and a half to 17 inches off the ground, ready to start a race. Once you have your ride height set and always set your ride heights with somebody in the car that would be the same weight as you as a driver, <clears throat> then we would go to crossover measurements. Most of our spring kits, not all, most of them always refer to our instructions for details, but most of our instructions are gonna tell you that we wanna have a gap between the top of the plastic divider and the bottom of the crossover about two to two and a half inches, somewhere in that range. Now, we're a little bit low on our crossover, works pretty good for us. That's something you're gonna wanna work out on your car individually. In the front, <clears throat> our crossover gap's about an inch, inch and a half on most cars. And we're about an inch and a half. And that's going to the bottom of this divider, which is kind of hidden by the spring right here. But we're about an inch and a half on the race car. So we kind of follow what we preach when it comes to tuning. Once you have ride height, once you have crossovers, then you get to go drive your car, and then you get to adjust shocks. Back to compression adjusters, we would start with the compression adjusters. Typically, well, let me back this up. If you just did a spring kit and your shocks are stock, we would suggest that you start with the adjusters all the way loose, both of them all the way loose. If you have our internal shock work, we're gonna set these right in the middle, which is gonna be a full two turns on the low speed, two turns on the high speed. There are four turns of adjustment in these, by the way. Some of them have clickers, some of them don't. These don't, rebound does on a bypass shock. Some are different. But we're gonna set these in the middle if we've already done the internals. If you have stock internals, we would suggest that you set them all the way loose, all the way counterclockwise, and go drive the car. That's gonna be the most plush you can possibly get it. Now, drive it slowly at first, faster and faster and faster to where you start to drive the car like you used to. If you can bottom the car out pretty easily, then we would put high speed adjustment in it at about a half a turn at a time and drive the same exact spot again and again, adjusting the high speed up a little at a time until it gets to where it controls how you drive. We don't want you just turning it all the way stiff and then driving the car because you might be leaving a whole lot of plush ride quality on the table. You don't want to run around with the thing brick stiff if you don't have to. So the goal is to sneak up on it. Start soft, work your way up. As you start driving the car harder, add a little bit more compression as you go. When it comes to low speed, after you've got the high speed set, start turning low speed into the car a little at a time, half a turn, quarter turn, until the boatiness goes away and starts to settle and leave it alone once you get there. If you go too far, you're gonna get some chop and chatter into the car. You're gonna feel that in the steering wheel. You're gonna feel it in your butt cheeks in the seat. Rebound, find a jump, jump it. Front bounces up. Slow the front down by adding some rebound to it. Jump it again. It's a little better, but not great. A little bit more. Jump it again, lands perfect, recovers once, rebound is good. Now, mostly we tune rebound with video because it's very hard to get from the seat of the pants. It's really easy to get when you have slow motion video. That's why it's hard for us to suggest how to adjust it. Mitch, you got something? Uh, yeah, from Squealer111, <coughs> one, 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 we kind of went over it a little bit, but uh, does the dynamic live valve adjust low and high speed as well? Dynamics adjusts low and high speed together exactly the same as our IQS system does. Whenever these adjust anything, they're adjusting both high and low speed.
I like the idea <coughs> of the car to make the adjustments, to be quite honest. Well, then you can do it. You can do it with dynamics by just setting, you know, your stiffness level in the car. But a lot of times um, how it tunes for you isn't the way people like to drive. So we really appreciate the IQS system because you can add it to any car that didn't come with dynamics. Back to what it costs for dynamics. I mean, you're going to spend five grand for the upgrade. We think it's awesome. Everybody should do it. But if you don't have it in your car, to go back and do dynamics on your car is going to cost you between six and eight thousand bucks. And why so much? Because the adjusters are 350 bucks a piece, number one. The labor to put them in, and these only do anything if you have an ECU programmed with a loom and all of the computer sensors that are on the car. Steering, throttle, brake, accelerometer, all of those things have to be added. So race teams that have put dynamics into a car after the fact, even with race um, discounts, they're five, six thousand bucks in it, and it's just not affordable for the average guy if you don't have some race team uh, hookup. So IQS is a much better option at two thousand bucks than trying to spend six or seven or eight thousand bucks on a Dynamics upgrade. What other questions we got, Mitchie boy? I want to also check on our <coughs> boy. What, what is he doing over here? Well, uh, Headshot Hills, uh, let me check on your X3 when I get back over to the other shop. I'm not quite sure if it's done or not. I'll get on that for you though. Oh, Headshot's got his car in the shop today, I guess. Well, we didn't uh, film over at the shop today, you guys, because it's nothing but asses and elbows over there. Um, the guys are really trying to knock out a ton of cars today. We've been super busy and super fortunate. Thank you guys for supporting us through these weird times. It seems like everyone wants to work on their toys when they've got time on their hands, and we really appreciate that. Check out the pre-runner with no motor. So if you guys are looking, watching right now, that's our pre-runner, it's got no engine in it right now. Um, that is because we're putting a big monster motor in this thing. The reason we're putting a big one in it is we've got a video coming up. It's going to be a Jim Connor like drifting video where this car is going to be doing some crazy stuff on some racetracks with a whole bunch of other cars. And uh, we're throwing a whole bunch of horsepower in it so we can drift it at high speeds. I've heard we got to break our land speed record too. <laughs> oh, there's also that, yes. We'll be breaking our land speed record in an X3 with that same engine right around the same time we're filming that video too. If you want to, we can go look at it. Let's do that. I want to look at that, but one more thing. I, let's look at the clickers on the Honda. All right, so take a look up inside the Honda. You'll see that it's a high and low speed adjuster, just like we had on the workbench. If you look at the rear shock, you can probably see it better. Oh yeah, I got it in here. All right. Well, that's a DSC, high speed, low speed. Once again, you're going to adjust high speed for big G outs, jump landings, and big hits. You're going to adjust low speed for body, slow movements, body roll, chop, and chatter. Got a good question here from uh, Doggo's down, down Est 1904. So if my rear is bucking, do I slow the rear rebound down? What is a good setting to start at on a DS model with RRIS? Okay, so bucking in the rear can be from two things. Typically, it is rebound. Um, typically, it is, but not always. If you bottom the car out too quickly because the compression is set too soft, it can go all the way down to the bump stop and it'll come off on a compression buck. So there's two things you can do. First, I want you to try that rebound, turning it in a little bit further. If it's on a DS, start with 12 clicks of rebound. All of our adjustments are set from all the way loose as zero to all the way stiff, all the way to the right. So 12 clicks would be roughly halfway. Um, if that does not fix your problem, then I want you to stiffen the compression in the car and make sure that it's not a compression buck, which would be blowing all the way through it. While you're still in a whoop, it's compressed and then it bucks off of it because it doesn't have any more suspension to absorb that whoop. So rebound first, compression second. Also, check your ride heights before you do the rebound. Make sure it's ride height correct. That's it. All right, so uh, this is the race car. You guys probably saw it in the last video. Uh, stock chassis that we're documenting and we're locating some of the fitments on the, cha on the, on the fixture table right now. If you look in the front, you see some of those machine spuds. What these are doing, these are locating pivot points right here, here, and these will be connected and welded to the table so that we can duplicate these pivot points on the new chassis that's chromoly. Um, on the workbench is that big race motor from Mark Queen. Ooh, queen. My favorite. <coughs> queen race 
So Mark Queen from Lake Havasu and uh, Evo have come together a little bit on this engine package. Um, X3, obviously. Here's a stock turbo for comparison to this turbo monster that's on it right now. Not even close. Um, got a ton of internal parts. Rod, piston, all kinds of head work, camshaft, bunch of big, big horsepower stuff. Now, um, probably make between four and 500 horsepower. Um, it'll be adjustable. We can turn the boost up and down as we need it and try and run some of these videos that we've talked to you about coming up really soon. So turbo package from Evo, complete engine and tuning package from Mark Queen. Uh, so stay tuned for that. When we get it in the car and actually get it running, we'll do some videos on that too. I'm so excited for that stuff. It's All right, well, let's, let's try and make this a quick video. If you guys have no more questions for us, let's wrap it up. Uh, adjustment questions on shocks are always something we get a lot of, so we hope that you guys can come back to this video on YouTube and on Facebook in the future and use it as a tuning tool to get your car right. All right, you guys, you know the drill. If you're ever looking to purchase any of these products direct, go online, www.shocktherapist.com. And if you need to get a hold of us, call the shop at 623-217. 4959 Monday through Friday 8 to 5 we're here for you to answer any questions that you guys need with adjusting your shocks getting anything tuned or making your car ride better we'll see you guys tomorrow same place same time <laughs>